Hi, Nature Scouters. So our lesson just stopped. My computer just turned right off. So I wanted to finish our lesson because we've got some great books today. So I'm making this video for you. Remember, we were talking about the octopus and the word octopus starts with the letter O and it says ah. And remember in the middle of the word octopus, it has another O and that says O, octopus, it has two O's in it. O, the letter O is that kind of word. It can make all sorts of sounds, just like a cat, right? A cat can say meow, a cat can say rawr, a cat can hiss or purr. Well, the letter O is one of those letters that says a million different sounds. So it says ah, like octopus. It also says ow, when it's next to a W, like in the word owls, owls. So I wanna read this book to you about owls. You know, I love birds and owls are really amazing. So let's look at this book. It's called Baby Owls. And you can see right on the cover, there's that hooked beak, right? It needs a sharp hooked beak because it eats prey. It does not eat berries and seeds. It eats things like insects or mice. And look at his eyes. The owl's eyes are looking straight forward. They're not on the sides of his head. They're right in the front of his head. So he has great vision and he can focus on things that he's hunting. What's super neat about owls is they can turn their head sideways from side to side. Since their eyes stay looking straight ahead, if they move their head, then they can see to the side of them and almost right behind them. Owls are pretty amazing. This book is by Deanna Caswell. And if you open it up, you can see the table of contents. There's a list of topics and there's, a, there's numbers. This tells us what page the topics are on. And whenever we see this, we know we're reading a nonfiction book. So this book is going to be full of facts about baby owls. A cute and cuddly baby. An owlet, that's a baby owl, sees its shadow on the ground. Do you see the shadow? What is that? The owlet cocks its head. That means it turns its head. Its huge eyes spot the movement. And quickly, the small owlet pounces, but nothing's there. The owlet tries again. It digs at the ground with its beak and still nothing but the little owl doesn't give up. It is determined to catch its shadow. And look at how fluffy the baby owlet is. He's covered with down and oh my, look at those sharp talons, look at that claw. Talons are his feet. And look, it's a hooked sharp claw, just like its beak is hooked and sharp. But look, this is the baby owl when it came out of the shell. Does he have feathers? Is his beak the same color? Owlets are curious about their world. They have a lot to learn. Owlets aren't ready to explore right away though. Newly hatched owls are blind. Look, the owlet does not have his eyes open. And helpless, they don't have feathers. Their parents must keep them warm safe and full. How big is a 28 day old barn owl? Look, his wingspan is about five inches. That's how, at one month, that's how wide its little wings will spread. As it grows up, the wingspan will get much larger. And the baby owlet weighs about 0.75 pounds. So it's not even a whole pound yet. Here's a pound. It doesn't even weigh a whole pound yet. Look how fluffy. Owls usually live alone. Males and females pair up to mate. They often have about five owlets each year. Female owls lay an egg every day or two. The eggs hatch in the order that they were laid. Siblings can arrive days to weeks apart. 
and a fuzzy flock welcomes the youngest owlette. And look here are baby owls. Look how much older this one looks than this one. This one was born later. This one already is getting its little feathers in. While female owls sit on the eggs, the male catch the prey. They, they bring the food to their mates. And here's a male owl bringing food to the female. Here are the features of a baby owl. This is the facial disc. It has large eyes and a hooked beak. Here are the talons. Look at those. I would not want to mess with an owl. Do you see why they're called the predators of the forest? They have very, very sharp talons. Here are feathers. And here's its wing. And you can see it's got lots of soft, fluffy feathers. And as it grows up, more of these types of feathers will grow in. Now, if you ever find an owl that's injured by the side of the road, you do not want to pick it up because look at those sharp claws. You call the Pennsylvania Game Commission and they will come and pick it up for you. If you absolutely have to pick it up, like if it's in the middle of the road, you could pick it up with a blanket, but I would not recommend it. Let the experts take care of that, but you can call them to let them know and they'll be right out. A place to call home. Different types of owls live all over the world. Snowy owls live in the Arctic. Elf and burrowing owls can be found in the desert. The only place owls do not live is Antarctica. Antarctica is at the bottom of the earth. The Arctic is at the top of the earth. And that's where the snowy owls live, at the top of the earth. And sometimes they migrate right into near where we live. Not often, but they do. There are more than 200 different kinds of owls. Owls live on every continent except Antarctica. So the green shows everywhere the owls live. And down here is where they do not live. Where do owls nest? On the ground, in trees. Here's one and here's the other. It looks like there's a big hole in the tree. And inside burrows. Remember we talked about how the octopus builds a burrow down under in the, in the ocean in rocks and then they build, sh put shells in front of it to protect themselves. Some owls live inside burrows. Before laying eggs, owls must find nests. They rarely make their own nest. Instead, they often use nests made by other animals. Did you know that? I always thought owls built nests. But from what this is saying, they use nests that other animals have already made and they put their nest right on top of it. Owls don't just nest in trees though. Some owls such as barn owls roost in buildings. Snowy owls lay their eggs on the ground and burrowing owls like these use burrows made by prairie dogs. Owlets eat meat. At first, the males do all the hunting for their fluffy families. The parents tear the meat into bite-sized chunks for their young. Once owlets are old enough, the females hunt too. Hungry little owlets need a lot of food. They have a lot of growing to do. So when they're really little, the mom stays with them and the dad hunts. And as they get older, then the mom can go hunt as well because they're gonna need a lot of food. As the owlet grows up or begins to grow, the parents stop tearing up the food. The owlets are able to swallow the food whole. So isn't that neat? Owls are like your family in that they take care of you, right? Sometimes families will cut up your food if you're eating something and it, it could make you choke. They'll cut your food up so that you don't choke. Owls do the same thing. Learning to fly. About two months after birth, most owlets learn to fly. 
Boys and girls, think about what you were doing when you were two months old. You were cooing. You were starting to look at your family and maybe do a little smile, maybe flap your arms around and kick your cute little feet. Owls are already learning to fly when they're two months old. Owls live a shorter lifetime than people do, so they mature faster. Owls raised in trees hop and flap from branch to branch, testing out their wings. And remember in story time, we were talking about how owls jump. And we thought, what? That's crazy, but they do. That's how they learn to fly. When they're up in the tree in their nest, if they're tree owls, they hop from branch to branch and flap their wings. This action is called branching. I've never seen that happen, but boy, would I love to see that. I know eagles do that as well. After owlets learn to fly, they learn to hunt. And here's an interesting fact. The female owls grow larger than the male owls. Finding food. Eventually, owlets learn how to find food for themselves. They aren't very good at first though. It takes time for them to become powerful hunters. They must learn how to use their strong eyesight and hearing. And I just think that that's so neat. They're not good at it right away. Sometimes when we try out something, we're not good at it either. And we have to practice. If you ever get frustrated, just think, hmm, pretend you're an owl, right? An owl has to keep trying, otherwise it will be hungry. And you have to keep trying, right? You have to keep trying to draw your letters, maybe ride a bike, tie your shoes. There's lots of things you're gonna be learning as a child. Just when you get frustrated, be like an owl and keep trying. Here are some foods that owls eat. And this is why I'm really happy we have owls. They eat rodents. And I love my hamster. My hamster is a rodent, but he's a pet. If you get rodents in your house, like mice and rats who aren't pets in cages, they can cause a lot of damage in your food pantry. They eat snakes. Snakes to me are things that should be outside. They eat mice, right? Unless you have a pet snake, but you wouldn't want pets in the wild coming into your house. So it's really great that we have owls hunting them. They eat fish and they eat insects. Did you know that an owl will eat an insect? Look at how beautiful the owl's wings are. Let me show you. And owls, I don't know if you can really see in this picture. Let's see if we can get you zoomed in. Do you see how soft the owl's wings are on the outside here? That's what makes them such quiet hunters. If you're in the woods and an owl flies above you, you won't even hear him. You might see him or her but you won't hear them. Their wings are designed with these very soft, fluffy edges, and that keeps the wind resistance down so they can fly silently. They are the ultimate forest predator. That way they can sneak up on their prey. Let's see, by the numbers. This is how far an owl can turn their head, 270 degrees. So it can spin its head around almost all the way. 360 degrees would be all the way around. That's because their eyes don't move like yours and mine. They have to move their head to move their eyes. The owl's wingspan, that's from one tip of the wing all the way to the other, is 40 to 57 inches. Hmm, that's like, about, let's see, a little bit shorter than me would be the longest. If I laid down and maybe you didn't count my head, that's how long the wingspan would be. That's pretty big, isn't it? The time it takes for the eggs to hatch. Once the egg is laid, it takes 26 to 38 days. That's about one month. So pretend it's the month of December. That's about how long it would take for the egg to hatch. This is a tawny owl. Isn't it cute? Look, his eyes are different than the other owl we were looking at. And he does have a hooked beak. It's hidden in all that fluff. He's cute. The tawny owl lives about four to six years. 
That's not very long, is it? It's difficult being an owl. An owl has eight toes. So you beat the owl. Most of you would have 10 toes. The owl only has eight. Getting bigger. Look at this is how big it was when it was 14 days old. And here it's 28 days and look how much bigger it got. That much bigger. Different species of owls grow up faster than others, but all owlets go through similar stages. Oh, and look, here he is as an adult. As they grow, flying feathers replace owlets down feathers and they begin to leave the nest. The parents still keep a watchful eye on the owlets though. So you can see when the baby, here's a baby owlet, it has lots of soft down feathers. And as it grows, these feathers grow out and new feathers grow in that will make it so the bird can fly. They have special feathers on their wings called flying feathers. And they'll have special feathers all over their body to show what kind of owl they are. Different species of owls have different feathers. Like look at this one. This is the snowy owl. And look, he's all white. He looks different than this little adorable downy owl, right? He's all brown. Look, you can see this owl is mature. He doesn't have all that fluffy down feathers that the other owl had. And he has very specific feathers on his wings to help him fly. After learning how to fly and hunt, owlets become fully independent. Some owls are independent after just a few weeks. Others stay with their parents for several months and eventually they will have owlets of their own. But before then, there is a lot of hunting and hooting to do. <laughs> Look, do you see his mouth? I would not want my finger to be in his mouth. Now, even though owls have very sharp claws and they have very sharp beaks, they do not want to come near you. They're afraid of you. So you never have to worry about an owl hurting you because they're, they're afraid of you. They are awfully interesting, aren't they? And awfully cute. And listen, here's my little owl. Isn't he cute? He's the great horned owl. Now he's the one that says, hoo, 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 hoo. He is the predator of the forest. All of the other owls are afraid of this one because he's by far the biggest one here that we have in Pennsylvania. He's not the biggest owl there is, but he's the one that other owls are afraid of and other animals are afraid of this owl, the great horned owl. There's another owl called the screech owl and he makes a funny sound. I wanted to play that for you. I have that here on my phone. He does not say, Hoo, 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 hoo. This is what the screech owl says. that? That's not a hoo 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 hoo, right? <coughs> Most people think that all owls say hoo hoo, but they do not. They have different calls and different sounds. And if you learn the different calls and different sounds, then when there's an owl out there and you hear it, you'll know there's a great horned owl over there or there's a screech owl over there. In my neighborhood, I heard a screech owl not long ago. And this isn't the screech owl. I didn't hear this one, but I knew it was a screech owl because I have I practiced some of the listening to some of the calls. And so I was able to say, hey, that's pretty cool. There's a screech owl over there. It sound they sound very interesting. Now, owls are are birds, right? Not all birds are like owls, though. Like this adorable little bird does not have that hooked beak. And he does not have talons because this little bird does not eat insects, mice, and snakes, and fish. 
these are song, well, not all of these will be songbirds, but most of them will be. I wanted to read this book to you so that you can learn some of the birds in your neighborhood. And we're gonna play a game afterwards. I'll hold up one of my stuffy birds like this, and you can see if you can name it. So pay attention during this book so you can learn some of the birds and maybe you can name some of them. Some of them you part probably already know. Now, I love this book. I checked this one out of Chester County Library. I put it on hold and I went and picked it up. And I like this book. I think I'm gonna get, see if we can get this for the Downingtown Library because it, it does a great job of showing you the different birds in your neighborhood. This is by Dylan Metrano. And you know what this bird is, right? That's the robin. We know that because he has a red breast and he's eating a worm. Robins eat worms. Every day we watch for birds weaving through our sky. We listen to their calls and songs and we like to see them fly. Now, here is the polite bird, the black capped chickadee. Right, we all know that that black capped chickadee says, hello, hello. And he also says his name, chickadee dee dee. Right, when you meet someone, you say, hello, my name is, and then you say your name. And that's what Mr. Chickadee does. This next one is a bird we have not talked about in Nature Scouts yet. It's the blue jay. He's loud and bold. We see blue jays a lot at our bird feeder and they are bold, they're bigger birds. And so when they come, some of the littler birds will fly away and they'll have to be patient while the blue jay eats. This little bird is a nuthatch and I don't have a nuthatch. Uh, I don't think I have a nuthatch um, stuffed animal. But this bird is super cool. The nuthatch can actually walk down the tree, straight down it. Other birds can't do that. So if you see a bird walking down a tree, you'll know it's a nuthatch. This little bird is the finch and we do have this stuffed animal. It's golden like the sun. It's our goldfinch. You hear his happy little song? It's the goldfinch. A lot of people love to see goldfinches and so they put little tiny seeds in their bird feeder and that attracts the goldfinches because they have this beak that's perfect for little teeny tiny seeds. Next we have the hawk. Oh, he's lost his battery. This is the hawk and every day he hunts for prey. Remember when I said this is a book for of songbirds? The hawk is not a songbird. He's got this sharp beak and he's got big feet with sharp claws. Like the owl, he's more of a bird of prey and he hunts things like snakes and mice and insects. So we do love the hawk because he keeps, he keeps our environment in check. If we didn't have the hawk, we'd have too many mice running around and it wouldn't be good for the environment. Next we have the Cardinal. He's so beautiful. He says, look at me, birdie, 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 birdie. He says, look at me, look over here at this birdie, birdie, birdie. And he's like a red race car. And look right here is the word car. When I see a Cardinal, I think of a red race car, zoom. And right now in the winter time, it's easy to see cardinals because they are so bright against the white snow. And you'll see them in the bushes and trees, eating berries and things. Next, we have a woodpecker. Now, we do not have this, this particular woodpecker stuffed animal. I think this is a red-bellied woodpecker, but I'm not positive. We have this woodpecker. Do you remember what he is? He's the downy woodpecker because down on the back of his head, he has a red spot. Do you see how they're different? This one has a black hat 
and down on the back of his head is the red spot. This one has a red spot on the top of his head. And that's why I think he's called the red-bellied woodpecker. I don't, I don't know, I don't understand who named the woodpeckers, but I think he might be a red-bellied woodpecker. And then we have this guy. Oh, he's losing his battery too. This is the pileated woodpecker. He's huge. He's so much bigger than the other woodpeckers. And he has this beautiful red crest on his head. And I really do love to call the pileated woodpeckers. If you call them on your phone, they will come and investigate and say, hey, who's in my territory? And they'll come and spy. So if you put in a, a pileated woodpecker call in your phone and you play it when you're out in the woods, they'll come and see who's there. This is the very intelligent crow. I do not have a crow stuffed animal, but you've all seen crows, right? They are all over and you'll notice crows because they do a lot of tattling. They're always out there calling at each other, giving warnings that there's animals about that might be predators. If there's hawks around, they come and, and let us all know that the hawks are there or owls. If you hear a lot of crows, it's fun to go investigate and see what in the world they're complaining about. They're very intelligent. And then we have the heron. I don't have a stuffed animal heron, but we see a lot of these when we go to the river, if we look carefully because they blend right in with the background. Sometimes they're, they're right next to you and you can't even see them because they're so still and they look like the environment that they're standing in. They hunt for frogs and fish and crayfish. And then we have the sparrow. The sparrow is so sweet. We get a lot of these in our bushes out front. I don't have a stuffed animal for the sparrow, but soon I will probably get one. So cute. This is the mockingbird and I do have the mockingbird here. Look, here's the mockingbird. Now the mockingbird is the bird that is known for having so many voices. There's the word voices. He can mimic up to 200 different songs and or she, and they are just known for having so many different songs. So sometimes you might think there's a different bird there because they're mimicking a different bird. They can also mimic machines. It's pretty neat. Now they look like the dark eyed junco, don't they? They're both gray and white. The junco is here in the winter time and in the fall. It's definitely, there's a line between the gray and the white. The mockingbird, it's just gray and white all over. It has flashes of white. The junco is an adorable little bird, like really puffy. And you'll see him on the ground throwing up leaves, not throwing up leaves, like tossing up leaves, trying to find things under the leaves. And this is what he sounds like. And a lot of times the juncos in the wintertime will, will hang out in little flocks so they're safe. And we have a pigeon. Now the pigeon, I do not have a stuffed animal of the pigeon, but pigeons, you're probably used to seeing them. You'll, you see them a lot when you go in the city, if you look under bridges or on wires, they hang out in the city a lot. This one, you know, this is the eagle. And I do have an eagle, but it looks like he's flown away. I will have to find him. He's not in my bin here. The eagle, it has a really fun sound. Eagles don't sound like hawks. You might think that they sound like a hawk, but they really chirp. They kind of sound like seagulls. They don't have that big majestic sound that a hawk has, but he does have a really super sharp beak and he does have, look at those talons. Eagles are really, really amazing. If you get to look up and you see a white head, it's and a brown body, then it's an eagle. If you see a white head and a white body, it might be, um, oh, let me think of what that is. I can't think of the name of it. Mm, I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, it has to have a brown body. Now, if you see a giant bird and you think it's an eagle and has a brown head and a brown tail, it might be a young eagle because they don't get this white head until they're about two years old. This is an amazing bird. This is the Oriole. 
and my Oriole is not playing right now. Actually, I don't know if this is an Oriole because look, I always thought this was an Oriole, but look at this head is what is orange and this head is black. I'm gonna have to research that. I'm pretty sure this is an Oriole, but they look different. Maybe this is a male, but if you wanna see an Oriole, they have them at Bondsville Park. There's one there nesting. And what's so amazing is that their nest is built down like a net. It's so neat. It's not up in a tree branch like you imagine nests. So it is really neat if you, get, if you can get to see an Oriole nest. So if you're ever at Bondsville Park, you can ask somebody there if they know where the Oriole is nesting. Maybe they'll show you where it is. Um, maybe this summer, maybe we'll have some programs there. I can show you where the Oriole nests. And here's the owl. And here it says they swoop soundlessly. And remember that's because the edges of their wings are so soft that it doesn't make much of a sound and they're very quiet. They also come out at night. They are nocturnal. And here is our robin. Now I've used my robin so much. Oh, it does have some sound. Listen, I can hear it a little bit. Here's our robin and our robin is eating a worm. They love to eat worms and robins will sing to you in the morning. They say robins come here in the spring, but we do see them in the fall and winter as well. Here's our little hummingbird and look at this. I do have a little hummingbird. Now this one doesn't squeak, this is a puppet. So this one doesn't make a noise. Did you know hummingbirds really do make noises? And you can hear their wings beating. And here this hummingbird is drinking nectar from the flower. We also have seen the hummingbird at Bonsville Park as well. They have lots of flowers there to try to attract pollinators and the hummingbird does like it there. There is one that nests there, at least one. And you definitely have heard these lately. These are geese. Sometimes people call them Canadian geese, but they're really called Canada geese. There's no such thing as Canadian geese. These are Canada geese. And they fly in that V shape when they are migrating. And I still am hearing geese outside. My little doggie loves to look up and bark at them, although there's no way she could catch them, right? They're super high in the sky. And the reason why they fly in this V shape, because they're using less energy if they're right behind a bird. And birds, it's so important that they conserve energy. They have a lot of work to do. Even to find their food takes a lot of work. And so they have to be very careful about spending their energy. This is a bluebird. And let me see if I have my bluebird. Here he is. Oh, so cute. Look. This is a bluebird and he sleeps at the meadow's edge. People love bluebirds. They're so pretty and they sing so sweet. And people will purposely put up bluebird boxes to try to attract them. They put them out in meadows so that the little birds will come and enjoy the meadows and then people can see them. This is a seagull. And you might have, if you've been to the beach, seen a seagull. Seagulls like to steal your food. <laughs> They're very observant. So if you're sitting at the beach eating a sandwich, you gotta kind of watch out for those seagulls or he might swoop right down and eat your sandwich. Every day we watch for birds living right outside our door. We pay attention to the birds and every day we learn some more. And that is Everyday Birds. I think this is a great book to check out. I'm very thankful I was able to check this out and borrow it from Chester County Library because when I go through it, it reminds me of all the birds. And if you don't know your birds yet, then you can go through the book and learn about the different birds and try to figure out which bird is which one. So let's do a little test. Are you ready? Do you remember what this bird is called? This is the blue bird. Now, sometimes people think this is a blue bird because he's blue too. This is a blue jay and this is a blue bird. Two totally different birds totally different personalities. This is like a soft, sweet little bird. And the blue jay, 
He's a big bird and he's in charge. You know this bird from story time. This is golden like the sun, so it's our gold finch. These are our busy woodpeckers, right? If you hear that sound in the woods, then you know there's a woodpecker around. You just have to look up to see what kind it is. And there are quite a few woodpeckers, different kinds in our area. There's the downy woodpecker, the red belly woodpecker, the pileated woodpecker. There's all sorts, there's even another one can't remember the name of it, but there's all sorts of woodpeckers. Sometimes it's hard to figure out which one is there unless you see it. What's this bird? This is the bird that can sing over 200 songs. It's the mockingbird. See how it's gray with a flash of white? This is our junco. Yeah, you can get them mixed up. This is long and sleek though in real life. And this one is fat and fluffy and adorable. This is a common bird you probably know. You probably learned this when you were super little. This is the red robin and he eats worms. There's plenty of food for him because we've got a lot of worms in Pennsylvania. Who's this? This is the polite bird. I st should have started with this one, right? Because we always say hello. And then he says his name, chickadee dee dee. He's the black capped chickadee. Did you know that they build their nests inside of a tree? They don't build their nest in a bush. They actually find a little hole that like a woodpecker has dug. Do you know what this is? I'll give you a hint. It's the red-tailed hawk. This is one of our birds of prey. Look, hooked beak, talons. He hunts for prey, just like this guy. This is the owl, our great horned owl. Hooked beak, you can't really see it because it's in fluff and talons. And this one is our hummingbird. Now I have one more bird. This is a mystery. I was thinking that this is an Oriole, but when I looked at the book, it's different. Did you know what's so neat about life? We're always coming across things that we don't know. Not everybody can know everything. But what's super cool is that I can research it. I can look in books and see, is there such thing as a black headed Oriole? If so, maybe this is an Oriole. If not, then I need to find out. It's a mystery. It's so fun to learn. I'll let you know next time we're a nature scouts. What is this? All right, boys and girls, it is time to go. It's been a long morning, losing power and now doing this video. But it's been so much fun to share nature with you. I hope you, when you go outside today, you can look for tracks in the snow. You might find crow tracks, fox tracks, squirrel tracks, bunny tracks, people tracks. You might find bear. No, just teasing. You won't find bear tracks here. Remember, they don't live near us. But you might find a raccoon, which would be super fun. It looks like a little hand. Have fun outside today and thanks for coming. And I will see you at, next, at our next Nature Scout. Take care, everybody.